Hello, you're listening to Hips Talk. I'm your host as always, Gav. Joining me today is Papa Stu. How you doing? And Stuart. How you doing, Gav? I'm good. How are you guys getting on? I'm fine. Uh, nice. Was it a Tuesday? Tuesday, nice, yeah. We're late, Tuesday, yeah. yeah. Aye, aye. Lovely. Sun's out. Yeah, oh, apologies. For? apologies for the episode being a day late. Usually up on the Monday, but uh, I was staying up for the wrestling on Sunday night. Didn't go to bed until 5am. And I was exhausted yesterday, quite honestly. I just die. Too tired to do it. So a bit more recharged and enthusiastic to talk about all these nil-nils. Come on, have <laughs> <laughs> Uh, you've got your priorities right. I think that's yeah. fair to say, Gav. Yeah. How was your weekend, Stuart? Um, not a great deal done, to be honest, mate. Um, uh, went to see uh, the new Batman film, which yeah. was very enjoyable. Uh, yes. Make sure you take a comfy cushion, because you are going to be in the cinema for about three and a half hours. Um, but oh, I guess oh, upside film. in, hanging upside in. <laughs> <laughs> No, I really enjoyed it. No, no spoilers, but uh, yeah, Robert Patterson played a very good Batman as far as I was concerned. Yeah, I was very impressed with him. Uh, I was very glad I took a watch because I was able to look at it and go, oh wait, there's still another hour and a bit to go. So I kind of prepared myself <laughs> for that. But yeah, three hours and then half an hour to include all the adverts and stuff. It was a long time. Um, yeah. yeah. That, 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 <laughs> Papa Sue's face there doesn't really look like he would enjoy three and a half hours in the cinema. <sighs> Mind, but I, I heard I've heard various different uh, you know, people. Well, put it this way, I phoned my mate and I was uh, saying, "What what are you doing today?" And he went, "I'm just back to the cinema." And this was about four o'clock in the afternoon. I went, "What are you watching at cinema?" Batman. I went, "What the fuck are you doing watching Batman?" You know, <laughs> older than me. And he says, hey, "Where's Pish?" So aye, aye. Ah, I, I, I take it, sir. A young man's film, I would imagine. I wouldn't say so, but I get different tastes. It's also I was going to say, I enjoyed stuff. it, so probably not. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. Is it, I, I take it, it's... it's I, I'll watch it when it comes on, on TV or on the fire stick. Yeah. I, 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 I'm not that keen going to cinema, to be honest. Fair enough. No, I, no, I enjoy it that. for, like, say, switching off, like, you know... Yeah. Uh, if I'm on the TV, uh, if I'm watching something in the house, there's still my phone, there's still distractions, there's still my cat. Whereas in the cinema, you just switch off and just the lights go off. And I love the cinema personally, but everyone's <laughs> own taste. Uh, like I say, I know we're distracting, talking about, we're, we're delaying talking about the exciting Hibs performances. Uh, if I have to say quickly, how was your weekend? Um, yeah, it was fine. What happened? Uh, I watched the game. I never got to get to the game because uh, Adele was away out with her pals. Uh, which kept on getting uh, postponed and uh, went out, so I missed the game. But I'm glad uh, because all you guys were bored to tears watching it, and I watched it in the pub. Uh, so I was in in my bar from three o'clock uh, until about three o'clock in the morning. <laughs> so I, I just remembered I was watching the UFC. That's Brilliant. what I've done. Oh, Aye, nice. So I ended up just watching and I was talking to a big Callum on uh, WhatsApp because uh, he was up till well, young time. Thank you. But he just goes quiet. He's like, mm. talks and then boom, he's away. So he's either hitting the brick <laughs> wall or whatever. So yeah, that was that. That was on Saturday and then Sunday. I just took it easy. That nice. It. Good stuff. Um, so like I say, we're, we're going to uh, talk about the Riverton performance that was 0 nil versus St. Johnston. Um, I mean, uh, I mean, starting with the lineup, it was uh, the same sort of formation we've been playing. But surprisingly, with Rocky out suspended, Cadden played right centre back and Doig played left centre back, and then Louis and Dre Wright played the wing backs. Um, Stuart, start with yourself. So it was a strange one to see, you know, Cadden play so centrally. It really is. Um, we we've all kind of agreed that uh, Cadden's probably been the star performer under the Maloney tendency so far. All right, not you, Cadden, but most of us would. Um, it, it kind of simply comes down to, and I know we'll talk about it. What other options do we have out there? Um, when you could legitimately look at the list of injuries and suspensions that we've got, there's practically a first teamer, um, a first team there straight away. Um, so I think decisions were made. Uh, very encouraging to see some of the younger boys uh, on the bench as well. Um, coming out, was hoping to to see a bit more of them. Uh, but yeah, it just kind of came down to what what options did we have? I mean, um, speaking of injuries, one of those players that is injured is Clark. And, you know, he played right back for Ross County. And we believe anyway that the thinking was he would play right centre back. And then there would be an overlap of, you know, the right wing back getting support from the right centre back 
and it's kind of like an extra player to the from the mark overlay it on that side. That's the way like we've seen Belgium do it with the back five, um, with uh, uh what's it for, for Tonga and stuff before he got a bit too old and stuff. He would often do that bomb forward from the left center back and overload. So, I mean, Papa Sue, do you think that was the thinking and did it work with Cadden and Doig as the right and left center back? It was maybe the thinking, but it's all it's all we had. It was either that or McGregor. And McGregor's not going to be able to do that. Um, he's there for cover, as we know. So I think that's all we had um, in, in the squad. So I think Maloney was forced his hand into that position. Like, obviously, we've all been watching him a, a long time now. I cannot think back to another period where we've had such an injury crisis mm. um, in, the, in the team, in the squad. Um, I mean, this was a question I had for a later on, but we'll just bring it now since you've mentioned it. I mean, um, like I said, we're going to talk about the performance and stuff, but, but I mean, is that, is, that an, is that an excuse? Like, you know, there's still good players there. Is, uh, you look at the lineup, you know, is, it, is that is still an excuse for, for the, what is it, uh, four goals in um, 10 games or something? Possibly going forward, Gab, but defence, we're, we're, still, we're still not letting goals in. Uh, we've, we've, we've done what, you know, apart from... Uh, was it Celtic? But, but how many nil nil draws have we had? So we're aye. doing I well in the defense. Come back. Aye. Aye. So we're doing well in the defense, but it's the last third, as we know. Uh, but just getting back to the the injuries, there's been a couple of teams over the years. It's had injuries like what we've had, and it's all down to training. That uh, the, the the training and whatever they're doing. Prior to training, are they not uh, stretching right? Or, and, and you can't, you think that, that could never be the problem with a big team. And it does happen now and again. So is it, have we got a problem with our um, coaching and what we're doing prior to training? Because seem to, we've, we've had maybe about three or four injuries on the training ground. So yeah. what's happening well, behind well, the let's scenes? Ask, right now, this stage of the season, Training shouldn't be about fitness. It sh- they, these guys should be yeah. 100% ready to go at kind of 24 hours notice. But, and I'm not wanting to point fingers at the previous regime, has Maloney and his squad, uh, sorry, management team come in and gone, what the hell are these fitness levels about? We need to push these guys a bit more. And this is where we're having the injury issues coming from. So it's a strange well, one. Could, could uh, it's, I can't think of many times where we've had this many players out at one time. It's uh, it's surreal. So, oh, we've got uh, 11 Gav, I think, is it? Yeah, is aye, it whole 11? team. Whole team. Yeah, you could literally put a team together um, with, the, with the folk that are out. Um, so, like I say, with those injuries and Cadden playing uh, right centre-back, Dre Wright played right wing-back. Um, I mean, Stuart, starting with yourself, it's... it's he done well against Celtic last week, but I hate, to, I hate to... This sounds horrible, but, I mean, it was kind of returned to norm in terms of his performance, wasn't it? Yeah, just when we start to think, okay, we're starting to see what we were promised, what we were all hopeful of um, for right. I I'm not going to point figures out. The whole team was disappointed on Saturday. Um, I think just highlighting him, um, there have been many, many players over the years that you can say, oh, aye, they're up for a performance against the old firm, they're up for a performance against uh, an Aberdeen or someone like that. But then when it comes to the uh, the also rans of the likes of St. Johnson St. Mirren, they're found wanting. Is that what Dre Wright is for us? Um, I, I hate to say, but he definitely should have been up for today. He was getting booed by both sides, uh, for the love of God. Come on. <laughs> I know. Um, they were ready to, everyone was ready to abuse him on Saturday. Uh, Thing is, yeah. Stuart, go, going back, Gav, the, Dre Wright and I would say the rest of the team, you play well against Celtic and you go and play Dundee, and St Johnston, and in my opinion, they were all well. You know, Dre Wright never kicked a ball against Dundee, and he's never kicked a ball against St Johnston. So as Stuart said, how if you play good against the top guys, how can you know just come out and have a you know? It should be feeling good that the the fans changed just because he played so well. He got Christ, he, he was applauded going off the park. And then he comes up against the two bottom teams and he kind of kick a ball, especially not just to him, everyone. So I, I just don't get it. I, I, I don't, I don't. And, and, and the, what they're trying to do at Easter Road is make a full 
uh, capacity or thereabouts to try and keep the the fan uh, the players still high, you know, like against uh, Celtic, Rangers, Hibs, Aberdeen when there where there is fans. But that didn't work against St Johnston. Yeah, it was, no. it was, what I seen was flat. I don't know what you guys seen at the, you know, at the ground. But what I was watching on the TV, flat. Um, in terms of the, you mentioned the, the Dundee game there. Make sure you check out uh, episode nine of episode extra time with uh, Liam, uh, where they, they obviously talked about the Celtic game and the, the Dundee game as well. Um, if you haven't checked that out also already. Um, but like I say, Stuart, like I say, very flat. One of, one of the players that did seem a bit lively, especially the first half, was Jasper. Um, but it's one of those ones again where he's, he's trying things and, and you know he has some exciting moments where he gets himself into space, but that final product is not there at the moment. Yeah, we're, we're starting to see we're almost like a, a rebirth of a Martin Boyle type. We all have to remember what Martin Boyle was like when he first came in. A lot of pace, a lot of trickery. Definitely not the end product. These are the type of guys that Hibs are going to have to continue to to get and build up and develop. I really, really like what I've seen from Jasper so far. If he looks up a little bit more, I think that could probably help his game. Um, but some of the, the highlights that they put together, and certainly Hibs have of him cutting players inside and out, he's got it in his basket. We know he can do it. Um, playing two up front with him, I think, would be a massive benefit. Um, but um, we've got another visitor into the podcast, Gav. Hi. <laughs> yeah, we need to cat come in the background there. He says hi. You know, you know what, guys? What who? He, and 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 he's. I'm not saying he's as good as, but you know what? He reminds me of Jasper is a very a very young Ronaldo, because when he came to Man United, that's what he did. He, he ran and ran and tried to do everything, and they had to teach it and coach it into him to pass the ball and find that final pass across, you know, across. Whereas Jasper's the exact same. Jasper has got all the trickery. However, it's his final pass that it just lets him down. And he doesn't, he just doesn't let the ball go at the right time. And yeah. it'll come. Yeah. How old is he? 21, 22? 20. 20 uh, there you go then. Yeah, yeah. certainly. Uh, I've got 19 uh, actually. I'll double check. Um, I've got a a buddy of mine when um, we found out that he signed him, um, he'd had a previous spell at uh, Colchester. A friend of mine's a a big Colchester fan. So got in touch with him and he had nothing but praise for him uh, as well, Mm -hmm. saying you've got an absolute product there. Yeah, there's a bit of development to go, but you will definitely see the best of him. And he's a a fan's favourite because he gets fans on their feet. We are definitely seeing that. Um, we, We just need the rest of the team to start firing as well. Yeah. So what age is he, Gav? He is 28. He will turn 21 in September, so still a while until he's 21. So, oh, yeah, still very young. You yeah. Yeah. You're talking seven, eight years before yeah. he's the same age as Boyle. You know, yeah. So a big difference, you know, in, in age. Aye. Yeah. And I mean, I think that, that's not his fault, I think, uh, that he's kind of... Oh, no, it's in. definitely he, his fault. He, he, <laughs> he should have been brought in and, you know, um, there should have been a Boyle replacement signed that is good enough to go and, and kind of replace that in the team. Yeah. And then he should be coming off the bench and, you know, working his way into the team um, rather than being relied on uh, to kind of create the chances. So, um, and I mean, like say, a lack of chances that we've really, we've not really got anything to talk about the other day. There was the odd one, like I can remember Jasper putting a cross, Dodge just almost got to the header and there was a a couple of half chances in the second half, but nothing really. Uh, uh, Nisbet out, Papa Stu. Doy just came in. A uh, fan's a bit frustrated with him. I know, I mean, he had a few bad touches and stuff. You got any sympathy for him? I mean, it is a bit of a graveyard shift up there, a very lonely shift. Yeah. But, uh, I mean, has he has he got himself to blame as well? No, I, th- I think uh, down to his bad injury, and also we were sort of led to believe that he had COVID or long COVID. Um, he looks as if he's lost a lot of weight, which is possibly having to build up again. And I know we're not talking about the Dundee game, but I thought the first half uh, against Dundee, he held up, um, nodded on. He, he, a, he did a he lot did of work lot against, against Dundee. You know, he was coming and doing a wee bit what Nisbet was doing. Coming short, holding up, laying off, and he was it was coming off for him, and I thought brilliant, um, because we know he's not a goal scorer, um, and I just feel sorry for the guy because he's he's had a few, you know, like a bad ta- a bad injury and the the COVID, if that's correct, 
Um, but we definitely need we, we need a goal scorer. But yeah. one goal scorer is the money is they going to help us. We need you know we need a couple because yeah. you know yourself if one is off, off form, we need the other one on form. So it shows. You know, you heard that stat, it's unbelievable. You know, between Hibs, Aberdeen and Motherwell, we're talking about out of the last 10 games for each team, there's only been one win. Yeah, I have got, I had, I had the, the Motherwell results in terms of, like, say, when we talk about them, which I'll bring up later. But, yeah, that, that it's, it's crazy. Um, yeah. yeah uh, and, it, and, we, and also, we are sitting fourth. How bad is, is everybody below us? Because we're sitting fourth. And we are shite the now. Yeah. Admittedly, though, what, what's the points difference between um, fourth and tenth? Uh, I think someone puts One two points together and all of a sudden they're into Europe. <laughs> aye, aye. Well, Livingston showed it, Stuart. Yeah. Livingston, Livingston have won something like three or four games. And look at them. You know, <laughs> they were getting, everybody thought that they were going down. We, we, everybody would put their mortgage on that Livingston were going to go down about six, seven weeks ago. Yeah, but going going back, I'm sorry, to uh, Christian Joyce, we've seen throughout his career at Hibs, he's a confident striker. He needs a little bit of movement in the team. Even last season, when he wasn't getting the goals, he was far, far more involved in the game, a lot more like he was in the, the Dundee game um, in that first half. It's I don't know what the thoughts are for the Hibs hierarchy, Maloney. Um, Deutsch doesn't have long left on his contract. I think he signed a new think, contract. Oh, he signed it? Under Ross. I think it was like a, a new three-year deal back in like September or something. Oh, was yeah. it? Oh. Uh, yeah, it was what I remember uh, when Ross, because we were committed to Jack Ross and all the players that he'd yeah. signed and everybody got, even Jake Doll Hayes got another new contract and everyone got three-year deals and stuff. And it was yeah. like Jack Ross. Nah. There you go. <laughs> tell you oh, was that part of the, um, all the, yeah, we, we, we had about five new contracts in the space of like three days. Yeah. Was that, yeah. yeah. I'll, I'll be quiet then. My apologies. That's fine. Um, but yeah, I mean, like I mean, he, 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 he's shown that, like you say, I've made this point before uh, in the last podcast and stuff. He scored 18 goals in a season that was uh, ended early by COVID. He, he can be that goal scorer. Um, like I say, it was a quieter season than Nisbet kind of took the headlines last season. Um, he's got the opportunity now. But like I say, I mean, I, I don't blame him for the lack of goals. Yes, he's still finding his feet a bit. But at the same time, like, there's just no service. Um, I was speaking to it was my dad's 60th, and I was speaking to his best mate, who's a jambo, and he was saying, Oh, this bit shy, he can he scored goals. And I said, Who's your best striker? And he was like, eh, Sims. I was like, You put Sims in that Hibs team, he might score one or two because he's probably a player that can create a chance for himself, but he wouldn't score as many as he's scoring for Hearts now. He, it was it's like, it doesn't matter who you put up front for Hibs now, it's an it's a graveyard shift that you just no service, no chances. Just yeah, it's because. We're, we're passing sideways when we come into the, the final third. We're, 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 see, when, when Boyle was there, you know yourself when he's coming down the right-hand side, how many times was a ball put in between the left centre-back and the left-back where Boyle was cutting in? So they were cutting out the left-back and he was getting to the byline, cutting it back or going on and scoring himself. We're not playing like that now. We don't play like that. We're, we're I, you know what? I'd love to speak to Sean Maloney and ask him what he is, um, what he, how he's wanting the goals, how he's asking his front three to, to actual score. Because we're not, when when it comes, as you say, Gabby, it's a a graveyard shift. The, the centre forward's not getting that wee slight pass. You, you see Man, Man City, like the other day, they're, they're sliding balls through for somebody to run onto, but we never do that. I've never seen us trying to play a nice wee ball through and, and try and catch the right centre-back or the left centre-back, you know, in between. But nobody's playing on the shoulder. Yeah. It's, I, 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 we get, it's as if we get to the last third and we don't know what we're doing. The amount is of that times right? is that me or what? No, no, I completely agree. The amount of times that we've got like an attacking thrown or we get the ball quite attacking and then we have a we kind of hold it up and then play it back to the, the left centre back, who then plays it back to centre back, who plays it back to the right back, and it gives the other the opposition a chance to get more organized and then we struggle to break them down. Like yeah. it's just like, like yeah. we, we're not taking chances, we're playing it safe, we're making sure we keep the ball 
and then we're not like say it's get just allowing teams to get organized teams that especially east of the road and stuff that just want to sit behind the ball see it out manage a nil nil if they can get a catch us on that break and grab it then great but if not then they're happy with the nil nil yeah Apparently, Ron Gordon, I didn't, I wasn't able to attend sadly. At the AGM, was very, very defensive of uh, an extremely positive January window. And we've definitely done a lot of building. Um, no one can dispute that. But we needed players now. And we knew that there was gaps in our midfields. Uh, we knew that we still needed another striker. Yet nothing happened. Again, it's a little bit of a disappointing one to kind of hark back to that. And, yeah. and we're seeing the the product or lack of product from it now. Do you think that there's something up with Boyle and he might be coming back at the end of the season, maybe on loan or something like that from nah, at the I end don't of their so. season? No, because it's as if we've sold them, but something's behind the scenes because when you get £3 million like that, you go and spend half a million on somebody that is a proven goal scorer at least to for a season and a half or whatever, you know. This, just, this is that's what we're talking about, Stuart. Yeah, no, but we spent 400 grand on Melkerson. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. So that was, that's, you know, Keith Wright went for that, you know, 400 grand. And, you know, that was, that was a proven goal scorer. We've got a young boy at 400 grand because we don't spend a lot of money, but we'll spend it on that lad. And I, and I don't know if you're talking about him, Gav, but, See, when he came on, he's been ready for a long time because he was putting himself about. He was giving the elbow. He, let, he, he left one on, a dull one on, don't know who it was, Kerr or whoever was there. I'm not sure who, who their, their back four is. But he left a dull one. And I'm thinking, you know what, son? For your age, and you're supposed to be not um, strong enough yet? No, I think... He's ready. He should be starting on Saturday. Uh, I like opinion. um Sunday. like when Dear Hot Dog said on the episode it was on where how uh, Hips took extra time. He mentioned about how he's got a bit of a swagger, he's got a bit of an attitude. He's he's you know, and, and from from what they were talking about, the guys kind of um uh, liked him a bit to Jason Cummins and that sort of swagger and a bit of an attitude and stuff and thinks he's, he can be the main man. So yeah, I like to say definitely yeah. uh, he was that was one of the more exciting bits um for about Five minutes when Scott yeah. Allen and him came on, and him and him, Jasper and Scott Allen linked up for about five minutes, and then Dundee, eh, sorry, St Johnston, um, kind of snuffed it out, and then it went quiet after that. Um, but that was that was a wee bit of excitement there. Um, but yeah, so it was great to see Milkerson come on. Um, hopefully, I, I don't see why he's not been getting started sooner. Um, but I mean, it's true. I mean, it's it's, it's four goals in 2022, uh, 2022, like we said earlier. One was across, so, um, but that's uh, and like I say. It was a 2 0 win against Ross County and the 2 2 draw with Livingston. So that's eight games from the last 10 where we failed to score. Like, this isn't working at the moment. No, no, definitely isn't working. Are we, depends how patient we want to be. If we're sat here going, you know what, the rest of the season we're writing off, it's a building season. Yeah, we want top um, six, fourth would be brilliant. But the rest of it is kind of here nor there. Now, we've obviously got Motherwell in the Cup. Relatively decent chance against a team who's also suffering equal to ourselves. Another trip back to Hamden. That's a good one for the coffers and good for the players as well. But I just feel we're kind of going through the motions this season for the rest of it. There, there's times where like, I've got uh, pals of mine who kind of message to say, oh, Hibs are on this weekend, coming around, having a few beers, watching them. I'm more waiting for my pals to come and say, oh, let's watch the hips, as opposed to me saying, I come on, come round and watch them. Now, you that's don't want to something them else. <laughs> I, I like them too much. Yeah, I had, I had the well, Is that's It Fast Supporters then. Club. Aye. Yeah, that's it. Um, yeah, they, I mean, they came round to watch the game on Saturday, and yeah, we had a, we had a great night, but it was more because we were chatting over the game and, and just kind of having a few drinks. Uh, yeah. Made it a lot better. Made it a lot more bearable. Yeah, I mean... Uh, you mentioned uh, there about patience, uh, Papa Stu. I mean, do we, like say, be patient with this style and kind of maybe reap the rewards more next season when uh, there's more players in and the, the ones that are there that are going through this will kind of benefit long term or do we have to change up a bit and go to plan B and start getting the results uh, in, the, in the more short term? Very difficult, Gav. 
me, myself, my opinion, I think you should just keep it the way it is. Uh, and I know it's hard to watch sometimes, but what's the point? What's the point of doing what he's done and then saying, right, you know what, we're going to change to, you know, a four four two, you know, and just play the long ball and, you know, and maybe so we're not got goal scorers, so it doesn't matter if, if we if we change to a plan B. If we're going to play a long ball, these play these teams nowadays have got big centre halves, and what they're just like us, they just head it away. So what's the point? We've not got the goal scorers. Just keep it the way it is, in my opinion, and and just and hopefully it'll click. That's you know this this season's finished. Yeah. Um, I've said it before, and. I don't know about you guys, but what would you prefer? Say if we can't get to the top four for Europe, what is your opinion? Do you want to be in the top six or in the bottom six? If, if we, Right, you, you, you can't go down, right? So we can't go down, but we're in the bottom six. Does that help us to bring in the young blood to start playing and playing the way we're doing, or we're in the top six, we kind of get to top four, so we're just going to be fifth or sixth, and we get bluttered for Celtic and Rangers, and we can't play, you know, the, the way that we're trying to, you know. But minus what, the financial is- rewards, I'd, I'd be taking bottom six. Get the youth boys in, get a little bit more experience for them, and you know what, let's have some fun. We've, we've done it a few times before. Yeah. It's actually made it a bit more enjoyable to end the way of the season. Well, we've been yeah. in the championship, guys, and and we won in the championship, and, and it was full stadium because we were winning. When you win and you score goals and you feel that you know you, you feel good, but what's the point of Celtic and Rangers come to Easter Road um in the top six? And we can't get we're, we're just going to be fifth or sixth, or we might fall into seventh, even though we're sixth. Yeah, you know, <laughs> stupid as the way Scotland always fun. Yeah. yeah, so we could be seventh in points value, but sitting sixth and get hammered for these teams. So what do we do? Do we look at uh, and say, take the hit this season and play against the bottom six and try and play the young boys, bring them through? I don't know. I, 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 if you, I mean, like I say, Europe would be would be great. But like Dave said before, like Dave said it on the podcast many times, um, that what's the point if you're just going out in the first qualifying? Not around what's what I know it's financially good and stuff, but like if you offer me like sixth place and getting to play Hearts and getting to play Celtic and Rangers game when we're not really ready to play them, um, or offer me seventh and then that means the likes of you know, up we go, oh, we're up and Josh Connor gets Aye. minutes, Melkerson gets starts, yeah, um, Hoy uh, gets I can't remember how you pronounce the boy's game, um, Hoy, hi, the, uh, he he gets minutes, maybe even Ethan Laidlaw and stuff. Then yeah, that sounds like a much more exciting last five games of the season than than. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, but like I say, we'll have to wait and see how it goes. And the last couple of things we just had on the St Johnson game. I mean, we mentioned some of the youngsters there. Uh, Josh O'Connor on the bench. I know he had played this Friday night, but hopefully, like say that like we're 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 down strikers and his bits out. Um, I understand he played the night before, so maybe not this game. But hopefully, in the games to come. He's going to get minutes. Um, I think it was for his birthday. It was his birthday, Gav. No, honestly, mate, I think they put him on the bench. Um, I watched the game, I don't know about you guys, but I watched the game, uh, second half anyway, against Rangers um, in that semi final. And I'm not putting the guys down, the laddies down. They're, they're, they're good players, but I don't think they're ready. Um, I mean, Joshua Corner you know, got two goals in the first half. I know it was only the second half you've seen, but yeah. he got the two goals in the first half, and he's been scoring goals for fun. I, I, I'm sure that you know playing in a cup semi final, if they'd progressed, the final would yeah. be great. But to me, first team minutes is where it's at. Like just uh, we're, yeah. we're, Nisbet's out. Get Joshua Corner in. Like what's yeah. the worst that happens? Like we don't need to score goals. Guess what? That's what's happening anyway. Yeah, I, I hope I'm wrong. I hope I'm wrong, guys. But what I, I've I've seen of the every player. I've seen it, and I know it was near, you know, it's not the best of camera angles and everything at the HTC, but I think I think these boys are still slight. It's not like his dad, his dad was a big boy, you know yeah. what I mean? And and I think the game's I don't know. I, I just think that you can see what a good manager is not going to throw in if he's toiling throwing a young boy 
and kill him. You know, I, there's a possible chance that I'll put him on the last five minutes and see what happens and see how he gets on. He'll run about, he'll be excited. Uh, but you can see what they've done with Melkerson. You know, yeah. Melkerson's supposedly further on than him and any other of the players, not just Josh O'Connor. And as I say, what I've seen, I just think that I hope that they take their time with him um, because I wouldn't like him to go in there, get a bad injury or just feel a wee bit down. It could change the other way. It could be the other way and I'm totally shit. I don't know. Yeah, and, and I know I know Dodge isn't the best form in there, but they like like I've said this before, the best thing that Gary O'Connor had was playing beside uh, Craig Brewster. And they played in a two, yeah. and you've seen it where yeah. Craig Bruce, like O'Connor would make a mistake or something and Brewster would be over um chatting in his ear. And, and like I say, especially if we're in the bottom six and it doesn't really matter as much. I would love to see Josh O'Connor and Dodge start every game, the two of them up top, and Dodge to give him feedback throughout the game. And, and during the week afterwards and stuff. But, but just, Gav, can I interrupt you a minute? What about, what about this guy, Melkerson, at 400 grand? Bring him off the bench. How, how, can, he play, how can he not play by or, 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 or Well, he can play anywhere in the front three, so I don't know, play all three of them. Yeah, I, I, I will, just, but I think, I think if we play anybody with Dodge, we play Melkerson. Maybe, maybe. You know, and, um, and, and maybe bring, and bring in Joshua Connor or whoever... Laid law, or you know, wh- whoever it is on the bench, and let them see what goes on at a first team match prior, after you know. So, yeah, I, I just think that for the young boy, just bring, bring him through and let him on for five, ten minutes if he is that good. I'm, yeah. I, I can't put my hand up to it, but Melkerson's the one we spent 400 grand on that lad. Let him yeah. play against me, Deutsch. Yeah, yeah. I, well, I say, I, I, like I said, I don't really see why he's no, why they're being so careful and so patient. I don't know because it's, maybe it is because it's so much money. I think and let's no rush them in and have them, you know, culture shock or whatever, and just you know, I don't know, I don't know. But yeah. he looked he looked ready to me, like you like we said when he came. Oh, out. Um, do you not, I mean, do you not think a couple of bad performances, the fans would be on Melkerson's back all of a sudden? Nah, the, the, nah, the, the price tag laddie. issue. Maybe, maybe. I am. Um, I don't know. We're, we're, we've not been. We've not been the most of understanding fans <laughs> throughout the season already. So, yeah, anyway, maybe. before before we move on from uh, talking about young laddies on the bench, it makes me feel extremely old having been at Gary O'Connor's debut to see his <laughs> son sat <laughs> on the bench. That that broke my heart on Saturday. Uh, it really did. But now, bright to see the young laddie kind of hopefully starting to kind of eke his way into the team. And it's true, as you said, yeah, last five, ten minutes, we're 2-0 up. Ha, ha, ha. Let, bring him on. Let, let's, see what we, let's see what he can do. Uh, you got me uh, excited there with my phone. <laughs> but I mean, one, we we're saying about protecting these young laddies like Sam Elkerson and stuff. Do we have to protect them for the likes of McPherson? You know, challenges last. If that oh. was Portrait, oh. then uh, can you imagine what would be written in the papers? But like, I uh, like, what a hey, Ga- Ga- for fuck's sake, Ga- Gary O'Connor would be on the market for the point he hit his laddie like that. <laughs> I I just couldn't believe it. And can I can I put my tinfoil hat on here? In a week where we've highlighted that we're wanting to speak to the SFA regarding the referee against Dundee, we get kind of that kind of challenge and that kind of decision against us. Hmm. There's a shock. Uh, it was, it was bad. It really was. It was a bad challenge. And, and the, the more you've seen it, it, it was like, I don't know how that, ref, that referee is going to, you know, have a top premiership match again. He's, because, about, he's about five yards away. How has he not ah, seen that? Ridiculous. He, he even thought about it. You know, he, he, he sort of, which a good referee does. You see him in England. They, they, they have a wee bit of composure and they think, right, okay, it was a, a bad challenge. Yeah, uh, and it's a red. But, Got the yellow out. I couldn't believe it. Could ah, not like, believe speaks, it. like use your linesman if you want to have a chat. If you, even if you want time to think about it, make it like, go over, have Aye. a chat with him. What was your view on it? You know, because like say he was in line with he, he should have seen it, but um or my view was blocked, whatever. But even then, if it just gives the ref more time to think, but yeah, that was a red card. I don't know how he never just went right, red, boom. But like say we we um I wouldn't have really changed the game. We still wouldn't have scored against 10 minutes. We've seen against Dundee and as the, the boys covered uh on the Hipstock extra time. I've got to be honest, I had to check my um, BBC Sports app to see if my notifications were working because I've not had a goal alert in fucking ages. It's ridiculous. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's bad. Uh. I know. 
Um, and I, say, I know you guys were kind of watching from home, um, so I'll kind of cover this. It was good to see more people in the ground. I was expecting a bit more, like the, the, the word sellout had been thrown out a lot. There was a lot of green seats considering the word sellout was thrown out, but it was good to see the place a bit busier, um, a bit more, you know, I think they announced it was 19,500. It wasn't 19,500. I, I wish they would just announce exactly how many people turned up, not how many seats were sold. But it would say a bit of atmosphere. Um, it was a bit, you know, a nice day, sunny and stuff. But then the, the, the performance just drained all that out and, and it just went flat very quickly. And if you've not been to Easter Road in a while and you go, you know, it's only a fiver or go along and then you go yeah. and then you see that, you're going, I'm not paying 30 quid for that. Yeah, so, that's, that's so, it. Uh, Gav, as you know, the game's all about entertainment. And if you don't get entertained, go see cinema. See, I I can watch it just like probably thousands of others, either in the house or wherever, right? So there's a lot of people can just say, no, nah, just watch, I'm not going to game because they're not getting entertained. But when you go to Easter Road and you see three and four goals and a couple of hit the post the bar and a wee bit excitement. But it's just, you're sitting there and it drains the life at you because it's over there, it's over there. A wee, oh, come back the way. Now, it's nice to have the ball at your feet and try and, and, and I, I call it like five-a-side football. You're just trying to get that wee, that wee nutmeg or that wee touch by the man and a wee goal, cut goal, and then come back. It's like five of sides he's trying to play. But yeah. we're, we're not playing, we can't kind of play it in the back third. Because we're good at the back when we're not getting pressed, but when we're getting pressed in the, in the final third, it's not happening. Yeah. yeah. I mean, the club are doing a lot of things right right now. We're seeing a lot more the way of fans' forums. There seems to be a lot of positivity coming out of the AGM, despite recent performances. Um, the um, attendance for a fiver scheme seemed to work well. They did a flash sale on the uh, replica kits. Again, great thing if we've got uh, extra bodies in the stadium. And even actually the special mention to the, the young lady singing Sunshine and Leaf in the operatic style at the start. So, something new. Well done, guys. Try it. It's absolutely fantastic. I thought she was brilliant. Um but the products in the park, that's what people are going to remember. Yeah. Yeah. No, I say great, great positivity there. There's a lot of positive things. Like I know they've done Retro Video Club before the Hearts game as well, which was good. It's good that they're trying these little different things. Um, I mean, not for singer, wasn't it for me myself, but it is different. You know, oh, folk well, joined, Gav, joined, joined in. It was, it was there. <laughs> Gav, you're at the American football. You imagine you went over to America, right? Oh, and yeah. you've got all the razzmatazz, you've got the, the barbecues and everything at the front, your hot dogs, your burgers, your beers. You go in and they're singing this spangled banner and all this and shit, and it's nil now. You'd be gone. I get that. Oh, I'm not going to... I know, Gav. But that's you get nil now. That's why it's a more exciting sport. <laughs> Aye, but, but what I'm saying is, you go there and you get the razzmatazz, but you get the razzmatazz for... I know it's not an, a, a, an hour and uh, a half, but whatever it is, you know, you get your razzmatazz. Your game's an event. It's not of just a sport. Yeah. yeah. So so we need that on the park, not just off the park. And I know what they're trying to do. And, you know, I applaud what Stuart says. I applaud Hibs what they're trying to do. But instead of spending that money, before, let's get on the park right first and then put the razzmatazz behind it. Aye. Yeah, I've, I've no idea how expensive opera singers are, but we definitely need another striker. You're absolutely right. 90, 90, 90, 90 quid, you know, 90 quid for about three minutes. I'm, I'm pretty, you're probably doing that, young lady, a great disservice to you. Now, years of training she's put in for that. Oh, oh, yeah. What are you going to pay a hundred pounds then? I'll get a no hundred for three minutes. Come well, on, she's on. done a song at half time as well. So, uh, all right, okay, well, I missed that. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I watched this thing at half time. <laughs> uh, the the one the the less the what I can't remember the name but Ness and Dorma that's the one the one the oh, the Leicester one, one. Uh, I was Ness and Dorma Leicester with the uh, run, uh, I thing with there anyway yeah um, my age but Italian ninety yeah yes <laughs> so I know the <laughs> three you. of us a few a few uh, two weeks ago um, spoke about this but like say there was obviously games have happened since then like say so we'll keep this brief because like say it's what we've done this before but. Before the split, we'll have a trip to Pataudry, Dundee United at home, and then Tynecastle. 
not an easy run in. Like, regardless of, you know, Aberdeen's form um, and the fact that, you know, like we, we briefly said before we started recording, the fact that, like, Hearts have been going to give us a doing twice and it's been nil nil. Still, three really tough games for picking up points when we're not scoring goals. Yeah. Well, yeah. Well, Aberdeen... United are quietly going about their business as well. Yeah. I'm amazed we're above them. Yeah. <laughs> and Aberdeen will come good when they play us. They'll, they'll, they'll pick up form. They'll pick up form. Every club that we play against in a bunch of shit, six, seven games, they always, oh, they just click when they play against us. It happens. It doesn't matter who we play, you know? And as you said, the United are playing well, just quietly. And then Hearts, no, you know, you know. Where was that again? At Easter Road or Tiny? No, it's Tyne at Tyne Castle. Tyne. Well, we play better at Tyne Castle anyway, so yeah. that's it. Uh, Aye. But I, it's, it's uh, and actually on, on Patoji, obviously the news came out, uh, Scott Brown retiring and having his contract terminated. I think, I think there's discussions Jeff Goodwin saying he's a very hands-on manager and stuff and uh, Scott Brown's duties might sort of diminish as a result. So his contract's getting terminated and he's going to be, like I say, retiring for football as well. So like I say, he's had a great career. Obviously, we remember his brilliant time at Hibs. So um, I, I always remember the, the, the I, just quickly on him, I remember the Ivan Spurl hat trick, how impressive Scott yeah. Brown was, oh. how, he, how he outpaced Peter Lovingkrantz, a really fast player, and Scott Brown had the ball, and he just bombed away from him, and then oh, right. for, for, for Spurl, like, it's incredible, like, obviously, he had injuries, and he's, he's adapted his game, and became a defensive midfielder, had a lot of success at Celtic, but some career Scott Brown, but, aye, um, and aye. Best he, must have a, he must have a coaching job uh, to go to Gav, he'll be, well, he'll be away. He's got, He's got links with Hibs. He's got. He's played with Sean Maloney and Gary Caldwell. Maybe he's coming to join the, the revolution. Uh, it's a pity that he's retiring because I tell you what, I'd stick him right in that middle of the park. Yeah, I really would. Oh, I'd yeah. put him in that middle of the park. I'll tell you what, even if you him... have him on the bench, Gav. Mm. Ah, I, no, think he's, just... I think he's. I think with. I think with injury, so he is. He is done, unfortunately, and that would have uh, been good. Um, but I think, like, if in too terms much of, like... speculation. Mm-hmm. Yeah, sorry, on you go, Gav. I was just going to say, like, if, if he did join our coaching team, like, so Jake Doll Hayes would really benefit from his, his wisdom. Um, you can still have him sign right him wisdom. There you go. Uh, this, is a, this is an interesting podcast. No, certainly, um, maybe a bit of speculation, um, but a buddy of mine up in Aberdeen suggesting that Brown wasn't happy that he was overlooked for the Aberdeen job. Um, um. Uh, that kind of he was brought in, obviously, ah. under a much longer term, wider picture to kind of overtake Glass, if Glass was a success, and then moving on from there. Um, maybe far too early for Scott Brown to take on such a big role at a club. Uh, but before uh, the news officially broke, um, I've been in meetings, sadly, all morning. I got a message through um, from an um, Edinburgh-based buddy of mine um, before anything came onto our group chat to say, Scott Brown coming to Hibs as part of the management team. Ooh. Now, I don't know... <laughs> how much truth there is behind that. I'm not going to chuck his name out there to embarrass him just in case it isn't true, but Scott Brown to Hibs. uh, Hibs talk exclusive. There you go. You heard it there. (laughs) (laughs) I tell you, I would still, I'd still have him signed as a player. Uh, Apparently, like, see, that's the reason Aberdeen get, like, his injury is a pretty bad one. He's, uh, he's out for a while. Apparently. Is it? Aye. Aye. Well, Gav, you know what? That guy in the changing room as a player even on the bench, doing like what McGregor does. Because you can have seven on the bench now anyway. He doesn't have to play. But having him in that changing room, getting him going, he's another Roy Keane. Mm. If he was in that Manchester United, you know what I mean? It, it, you need somebody. We've not got a leader on that park. Well, let's um, be honest. Everybody's injured. He might as well come and join the party. Man. Yeah. Right. Well, I mean, I, I, I would say I would say we would have a we do have a leader in the park. I think Portress has been brilliant, uh, stepping up on that, and I think he's been a massive part of reason why we're not conceding goals. But Portress isn't the reason we're not scoring up the other end. I think he's, ah, I, I think he's right. brilliant. Um, but yeah, but like I say, we mentioned uh, Todgy, uh, Dundee United, and Tynecastle the last three games before the split. But before that, we have Motherwell in the cup. Uh, in terms of playing them this season, we beat them three two back in August. That seems like forever ago now. Uh, and two draws since then, a 1-1 and a 0-0. Uh, they beat Aberdeen in the last round, um, but their last 
league win was Boxing Day. <laughs> so like Jeez, we talked bro. about earlier about the form. So it's zero wins in 10. And they're only a point behind us when they've only had zero wins in 10. This league is crazy this year. <laughs> what oh. is going on? Um, but I mean, I obviously cup games, quarterfinal. Papa Stu, something you're saying. How are you, you feeling going into it? Because it's away from home. And believe it or not, well, you know, our uh, fan base that go away from home, they make more noise than what we make at Easter Road. So we'll have that full, because it's a cup game, we'll have that full uh, stand at the back of the goals, all full. Uh, so, uh, you know, I don't know what it holds, a couple of thousand, two and a half thousand. Uh, I, 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 I fancy us. I do. I thought it's a cup game. I really do. I fancy us because they're playing shit. might go into extra time, maybe penalties. Nah, you never know. The way we were playing. The way we mother while are playing, get your money on aye. penalties and get practicing aye. penalties all week. Aye. Aye, aye, that's right. Could be, you know. So aye. it's, but I still fancy us. We, we seem of, I don't know, but I don't want to stick my neck out. But I just feel that we're a better side than Motherwell, and and because they've not done much in ten either. I think I think we've, we've got. I think we're, I'm going to stick my neck out. We're going to win. We'll win it in injury time. On, on, on goal. <laughs> there you go Stuart how are you feeling good at that yeah I actually had a quick r- review of the, the Motherwell squad before coming on the pod God, I, there's a lot of decent players in there um, certainly options um, going forward a really big fan of that uh, for what I've seen that uh, Woolery uh, and that Van Zien that Van they've Veen. got sorry yeah, Van Veen Kevin, Kevin got... Van Veen's a good player yeah big big uh, yeah dealer. so it's looking at that squad, it doesn't really suggest the, the problems that they have. And Motherwell have always been great at bringing uh, the youth boys through and continue to do so. Um, I'm not wanting to do it. Yeah, Debbie Downer, I wish I had your enthusiasm and your positivity, Stu. I reckon it's going to be one all during normal time and we're going to go out in extra time. Ooh. Sorry, I just I'm I'm not feeling it. The the positivity is I get to go to the pub on a Sunday at midday and start <laughs> drinking. That, that's what I'm looking forward to. Yeah, <laughs> um Kevin Van Veen's kind of been their main man, especially since uh, Tony Watt departed for Dundee United, obviously. So yeah, it's uh, it's, it's a tough one to call. I mean, it's a tough one. I, it's it's you know we can't just go flick a switch. Positivity, hips are brilliant. Like we've seen the last few games, we don't look like scoring, and even like. Uh, I was a bit apprehensive. I was trying to be positive. Um, I remember doing the podcast, um, I think it was with Pap Stu and Stephen in person after the Ross County game. And I was I was just trying to be positive and stuff. But at the same time, both goals were hit like tremendous hits from distance. We weren't nah. putting the ball on a on a plate and then tapping it in or anything. There was it, it just well, this has been a, an ongoing issue all year. Um so I hopefully though, uh, like I say, we're, we're things start to click. Um, starting with the cup and then a, a big three games after that. So, like, see your score predictions for the game, guys. Uh, I'm going to go nil nil, and we'll win it with a own goal and in injury time. Oh. You, you said you stick in. Uh, yes, yeah, so I'm going. Yeah, I'm going to stick with that. I'm going to say one all in normal time, and we're going out in extra time. Sorry, boys. Uh, I'll go nil nil and penalties and then who knows after that <laughs> <laughs> I said how bad is this but but I hardly scored a goal <sighs> like I, I, oh Jesus right <laughs> So, yeah, um, let, let us know your score predictions at HFC Talk uh, and everything we've kind of discussed today. Guys, you got much plans for the rest of today? Catch up on work after Skyping off today. I have to podcast. Nice. Uh-huh. So I was just telling a client I'll phone them when I'm finished. So <laughs> your, your important Zoom call. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Aye, that's right. What about yourself, Gav? What are you up to? Uh, last day of like uh, I say I leave. It's gonna be a long weekend off, so back to work tomorrow. So try and chill out before going back to work. Um do maybe watch a movie or something. Don't know. Just just chill out a bit. Obviously get all this uploaded and stuff. But yeah. Nice chill oh. Tuesday night, I think. So I'm nice back. I'm back watching the start of McMafia. I've watched three episodes last night at the start because it's a new, a new uh, McMafia two's coming on again. All right. You ever watch that? No, I'm not. No, seen no, it, no. I've got it. Ah, it's good. Uh, it's about the Russians uh, and the, the actual financial down in London 
Uh, it's really good. And how the big mafia, the, you know, the Russians, uh, I, how, how they work, it's good. And so it was a really good, uh, it was on a couple of years ago, I think, maybe three years ago. Uh, so it's there's the second lot coming on, so I'm going to watch it like what I did with the Peaky Blinders. Nice. Go and watch it all and then watch watch the, the follow-up. Yeah, so it's something to watch. Something yeah, you to watch touched on it there. I need to catch up on episode two of the new Peaky Blinders. No seen that uh, yet. I've I've watched. Have you not? Nah. It's one of those ones. My brother brother loves it, and and he goes, "Oh, you need to watch it." And he loves it, and he's got Peaky Blinder merchandise and stuff. He's like, "You need to watch Peaky Blinders." I'm like, "Yeah, you're too enthusiastic, so therefore, no." I don't know why. That's just where my (laughs) my mind goes. Um, It was like Game of Thrones. Everyone's like, "Watch Game of Thrones. Watch Game of Thrones." And I was like, "Nah." I've never watched that. No, I've never watched that either. Nah, mate, you should watch Hibs. They're brilliant. Honestly, that's fantastic. (laughs) Now you get a good, you get a good them. sleep. You get a good sleep <laughs> when you watch Hibs. Yeah. Um. All right, but anyway, let us know. Um, like I say, everything, uh, your thoughts on everything we've discussed today at HFC Talk. Let us know your score predictions for the game. Enjoy the game on Sunday. Hopefully, it's a bit more exciting. And um, thanks to you guys. Thank you very much. Cheers, Gav. Cheers, thanks man. Thanks for listening. We'll be back next week. Cheers. Cheers, boys. Bye.